We're going to start off by taking off the seat and then you'll see here real quickly that when I pull the side covers off, I want you to inspect as you go. Check everything out, don't just rip it off. Next we're going to take off the fuel tank. You're going to remove the red selected fasteners on all microfishes that I show moving forward. Be prepared of where you're going to also put that gas tank. Now you can see them taking off the shift lever. I found a problem, so we're going to make sure and record that on the work order. Anytime you find something, I'm going to inspect the wires here. You'll see I found some damaged ones. Record it now so you can create a checklist step item to make sure and get that repair done. Let's move to the carburetor. Remove the selected screws. Then pull the air box back, slide the carburetor off, and remove the throttle cables on the opposite side. All right, I discovered another problem. This is from over tight cable ties or zip ties, and you gotta think about when those handbars rotate back and forth, they'll tear into that harness. As you're unplugging electrical connectors as needed, make sure and look for the ground wire attached to the engine or frame. All right, we'll move on to removing the radiators. You know, disconnect the hoses and any electrical connections from the fans or thermostat switches. And then look at the photo here for the bolts to take out the radiators. We're now going to remove the exhaust system. The one on this motorcycle is an aftermarket full Yoshimura, so it might be slightly different, but the fasteners are in similar locations. All right, when I was taking off the right radiator, I'd found that there's a problem I'm going to want to address when I go back together. Check this out. You can see it's been uh, smashed. The radiator's in pretty good shape. It's just that nipple there, but I'll go ahead and uh, fix that. I'm going to start taking off the motor mounts, but I'll leave the bottom one in to support the engine until I'm ready to fully remove it. So check out which fasteners to remove right here. Keep in mind the photo only shows one bolt. Leave number 20 in to support like I was talking about. Now check out this tip where I talk about labeling left or right so it's just so much easier to know which motor mount, how it goes in, and it's just going to make it so much faster on assembly. You're going to see me do that later on on some other parts as well too. All right, now I'm going to remove the skid plate and then the uh, fasteners related to uh, draining any of the fluids. i got a really important tip coming up next. Check this out. Here's the fastener for the drain bolt and the oil cooler line. All right, pay attention. This is really important on engine overhaul. Anytime you have a dry sump system, you really need to consider flushing that external tank and system. If I just put this motor back together and didn't flush that tank, look at that known debris that's in that oil system. you got to do the whole job. Now I'm going to remove the front sprocket off the engine and you're going to see I'm going to unstake this washer that's in this picture right here. You can see that's securing the nut before I can impact it off. Make sure the transmission is in neutral. Alright, let's loosen the rear axle so we can slide the rim forward, creating some slack in the chain so I can slip it off the sprockets. Now I'll go ahead and take the front sprocket off, put an O on it for outside. Sometimes your sprockets are flat on both sides and this is a quick reference of how it was when it came off the motorcycle. Now remove the swing arm axle nut and you're going to watch me jack the bike up and support it and then use a drift to push through the frame and the engine mount. A little trick I like to do, I leave the axle, the swing arm axle if you will, still in the swing arm. Don't pull it all the way out because then you have a connection between the frame and the swing arm. I just want it removed from the motor and you know I have to obviously come out the other side. So there's a little tip for you. Don't pull that all the way out and it'll help support this so it doesn't just come slamming down. You saw in the video I put the jack under there so the jack is supporting the frame. We've got that little bit of stability right there. We should be able to get the motor out and then what's great is once the motor's out just push the axle right back through and you get your rolling chassis to put in storage until you're done with your motor. Now we're ready to take out that bottom motor mount that we had left in earlier. What you're going to see me do next is crucial. I'm going to stop. I'm going to clean. I'm going to put my tools out of the way and create a safe workspace where I'm not going to slip. I'm going to check the ground for oil, antifreeze, anything else that's going to give me problems. I also want to be making sure looking under the lift that there's no issues or I'm going to be tripping over something. I really want to make sure that when that motor comes out that I'm ready for it and I know exactly where it's going to land. Not where I'm carrying around and tripping over things. So this is a great stopping point and should really reflect on what a great practice this is. You saw me take off one last part and that was the horn. 
it was just going to be uncomfortable for my arm there as I was putting pressure against it so I just removed it out of the way. Now make sure it's a great idea to stretch and be ready for this. Things are nice and slick so all right, there you have it. There's how to remove an engine out of a motorcycle modeled on this DRZ 400 uh, SM, but can be used in numerous different vehicles. Take a look at this last photo. Notice how I orientated the engine so that if something got bumped, it wouldn't roll off the motorcycle lift. You have to take this into consideration. You don't want that to fall off the bench and have unnecessary damage, believe me. Thanks for being a supporter. Please feel free to donate, subscribe, or schedule an appointment for your own personal training session. Make it a great day and keep wrenching.